You know, I love this scene at the end of the game. On ESPN2 HD, presented by Pioneer Plasma. The Rice Owls have won the toss. They have deferred to the second half, and they kick it off. It's juiced with this high end of a in kick, and it goes out of bounds. There will be a penalty to start the ball game, and the Texas Longhorns will take over with very good field position. Colt McCoy, starting at quarterback. Last week against Ohio State, 19 of 32, 154 yards, one touchdown, and had one big interception in the ball game. And that interception, really an uh, interception a lot of quarterbacks would throw, not just a freshman making a second start, did not see the linebacker drop, but usually makes very good decisions. Greg Davis had a good point. He said, this guy knows our offense so well already, he very rarely misses an open man. So let's see if, uh, just as Ed said, with Texas comes up with a steady dose of running. Jamal Charles had 187 games in this game last year. And that's what they do, except McCoy keeps it. Going to have five, six, and seven yards. And finally will be tackled out around the 43-yard line. Texas on offense, some absolutely huge offensive linemen. And in fact, when you look at Blaylock, Dockery, Sinline, Studdard, and Hills, an average of 6'4 and a half, 317 pounds. And it's not like Rice is that small up front. They average just about 290 pounds. But this offensive line for Texas, a little, little uh, deceiving because they move a lot better than you think at that size. Well, they go with the running play this time, and it's Selvin Young. Turns it up, going to have the first down as he comes out to around the 47, now the 48-yard line. And the Longhorns will move the chains on their second play. Rice on defense, best way to describe it. Three down linemen, three linebackers, everybody else. You're either a corner or you are a safety. And this is an entire setup by exactly what Todd Grant did at West Virginia and at Tulsa. It's a lot harder to recruit big 290-pound guys who can run. You get more 210, 215-pounders. You can put them at that strong safety spot. Texas leaves two tight ends of the ball game for blocking purposes. Here goes Selvin Young. Going to have the first down, and he'll have 11 yards on the play. Keeping the two tight ends, they're keeping Rice a little more honest as far as bringing pressure from the outside. Well, they want to have that balanced look, Ron, because they want their young quarterback to be able to see how are they going to line up. So if you come up with two tight ends, they have to commit. If they're going to bring pressure, it becomes a lot easier to see it. Selvin Young's just a different guy this year than he was last year. He's battled a bunch of injuries, lost some weight. He looks very quick. Casey Stutter, number 64, with an outstanding block. Here comes an option play. And McCoy will pitch it back at the last moment. Young, 25 at the 20. And it'll be first down Texas as they go with a little option here to give the Owls something more to think about. Gain of 21. Brian Reigns made the tackle. What a great job by McCoy. You know, everyone, of course, is going to continually talk about Vince Young, Vince Young. Well, Vince Young's gone. And Colt McCoy is a much better athlete than I think people give him credit for. Nice job tucking that in. And, of course, Selvin Young, the senior, staying in relation with his quarterback. That was the key. 38 yards and three carries for Young to open the ball game. And Texas with a hiccup here as they have movement. And that will cost them five yards and slow things down. 64 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Take a look at Texas's impact players. Well, let's go inside. We already talked about the size. Stuttered and Senline, both of their fathers played at Texas. Blaylock, who a lot of people thought might have gone to the NFL, comes back. All seniors with a lot of starts, and all of them well over 300 pounds. But the impressive part when you watch them on tape, Ron, is they can all pull, they can all get out in space. Jamal Charles checks in at tailback, number 25. And he gets the handoff, bounces it outside to the left, turns it up. 15 down to the 14, and he is going to make it a second down and short. Second down and four with a gain of 11 yards. Dietrich Davis, a sophomore out of Brackettville, makes the tackle for Rice. And Tony Hills, number 79, the big left tackle, threw a paving block to get uh, Jamal Charles outside. And this is exactly what Todd Graham, the head coach of Rice, and his defensive coordinator, Paul Randolph, feared, is that the size of Texas, that 3-3-5, if teams are going to run sideways, they can chase you. But if they're going to run right at you, very tough to slow them down. Well, the spot has now gone to the 15. So with a second down and five. And they'll go to Charles again. Looks for a spot to run. Bounces it outside. World-class feed at the 10, at the 5. And it will be first and goal. Texas from the 4. Another gain of 11 yards. 
Brandon King on the stop for right. It's just a straight zone play. Absolute pancake block by Blaylock. Just buried his man. And Charles showing good patience. You know, Ron, a lot of times track guys, all they want to do is try to get out in space and outrun everybody. But Charles is a true running back. Even though he's a 10-1, 300-meter guy, he's very, very good with patience and has a lot more shake in space than you would think with a straight-ahead sprint guy. Well, you saw the numbers that he had last year. He didn't carry it a lot, but he was just under 190 yards. As Selvin Young checks back in the ball game, Young goes right side at the three, at the two, at the one. Touchdown, Texas Longhorns. They did not throw the football. Everything on the ground. Dietrich Davis tried to make the tackle, and Young just blew right through it, our Selvin Young. Broke right through it, so... But with the horns, I would have to think they're smiling offensively. Exactly the exact same play that Jamal Charles just ran and almost the exact same type of run for Young. He ducked inside and then went to bounce it out. Very strong guy, 205 pounds. Good job finishing the run. Greg Johnson to attempt the extra point. Trying to make this a 7-0 ball game. 65 yards on the opening drive. High pass, but uh, it is down, and the kick is up and through. So Texas very convincingly scores on the opening drive at 7-0. When we come back, we'll get a look at the Rice Owls and Joel Armstrong at quarterback. Can they score on their opening drive? 11.53 showing on the clock, 7 to nothing. Uh, the eighth-ranked Longhorns score on that opening possession, traveling 65 yards. And Selvin Young is the man who takes it in. No back-to-back -back losses since 1999. 78 straight games. That's uh, the longest current streak in the, the NCAA. And Greg Johnson will kick it off. Andre Downs and Marcus Knox. It's going to come down to the two-yard line, and it's going to be Falco. 15, and he will make it just short of the 20-yard line. And that's where Rice will set up shop. Now, we mentioned Joel Armstrong starting at quarterback because of the injury to Chase Clement to his hand. Last week, Armstrong came in the ballgame. Background on him. Played high school football at Longview High School, 5A ball here in the state of Texas. And was very good, not only at wide receiver, but as quarterback. So he has been their number two and also their number one quarterback last year. And he was a guy who Mac Brown singled out instantly when we started talking to him that he has as much speed as anybody chasing him. So a little different dynamic offensively for Rice than Clements in there. So he goes from a shotgun, a high pass, and that pass is going to be thrown low. Offensively, probably the thing to keep an eye on most are some veterans who have a lot of experience. For instance, Rob Kruger at left tackle, 14 straight starts for him. His dad, by the way, played uh, at Rice as well. Keos at left guard, 13 to 14 starts. Wilkinson, 14 straight starts. And David Birkin at right tackle, a sophomore, 14 straight starts for him as well. So it's going to be second down and 10 Rice. A quarterback draw. And it's going to be wrapped up by the entire middle of that defensive front, led by Killebrew and Bobino. The Texas defense. Terrell Brown, suspended last week, is back this week. Did not play in the Ohio State game. A senior out of Mesquite, Texas. Very valuable member of that secondary. And it looks like all of the charges will end up being dropped against Brown, but... Coach Brown's rule is, no matter what, if you get arrested, you're going to get suspended for a game. doesn't matter how big the game. Uh, and I think that was a nice message sent by Coach Brown and his staff. You sit down if you mess up. Third down. They need to take it to the 29. And Armstrong gets by one tackler, will not get by the second as he is run down by Muckleroy, a red shirt freshman out of Hallsville, Texas. Uh, Roderick, 6'2", 230 pounds. And Muckleroy is in there because Drew Kelson, the junior hurt his ankle in the first week of practice and has not been able to play, and they were a little concerned about Muckleroy's knowledge of the defense, but has done very well. He has great explosive ability, but they were concerned about his knowledge of their package. Scrub stands back to punt. Wobbly spiral is going to hit at the 45 and almost touches one of the Texas players. Going to be touched dead by a Rice player at the 46. 
So let's take a timeout. 35 yards on the kick. 9.57 left. First quarter. Horns 7-0. 7 to nothing as we return Texas. Someone's wonderful retirement coming out of the ground right there. Casey Stutter just a moment ago, the uh, senior left guard out of Lone Tree, Colorado, before he came on the field with the offense, getting the crowd going, saying, hey, let's hear you. Let's hear a little noise right here. Looks a little different than his picture, doesn't it? Used <laughs> to have uh, a wig. <laughs> as, uh, as Ed mentioned, at the top of the telecast, his dad played... Uh, at, uh, at Texas, as did the Lyle Sinline, the center, who was right next to him. Charles back in the ball game at tailback. First pass of the night, and it's thrown complete, and that is Finley. Jermichael Finley, a tight end, who is a, a redshirt freshman tight end that's good for 21 yards, and a lot of people feel that this kid could become the next real weapon at tight end for the Longhorns. And they have to replace Dave Thomas. They got so used to having a vertical threat at their tight end position. And really, that was, Dave Thomas was the guy that Vince Young really would lock in when he needed something. And Greg Davis said, we're waiting for this guy. He's going to break out sooner or later. And the other day at practice, they were working him an awful lot in the passing game. Well, Jermichael is 6'5", 236 pounds. As that ball goes straight ahead with a keep by McCoy for short yardage. And Chuku, George Chuku, the defensive end on the left side, a junior out of Fort Bend Bush High School, is there to make the tackle. One other point to make about Finley, though, you, in watching him catch that ball and run, it looks more like a wide receiver yep. than he does a tight end. Yeah, Very he, athletic. He's built that way, and, and when you watched him the other day in practice, and he's down the field, he runs the seam, he's got really long legs, he's a long strider, and you're not going to be able to cover this guy on a regular basis with a linebacker, so he's a mismatch problem for most defenses. Straight ahead, Charles pumping his legs. Hit, gets by one tackle. And then is going to be stopped at around the 29-yard line. In front of only over 89,000 fans, the Longhorns, two turnovers proved critical, including Billy Pittman's fumble on the two-yard line. Ohio State capitalized. Ted Ginn gave Ohio State the lead with a 29-yard pass from Troy Smith. And then Colt McCoy couldn't pull a comeback. Threw an interception in the third and handed over a 24-7 victory to Ohio State over the Longhorns. Selvin Young back in the ballgame at tailback. It's Mac Brown. We'll talk more about where he's standing on the sideline as Young breaks it open, has the first down, and is loose. 15, 10, 5, and dives for the corner. Did not get in, but there was a flag down in the secondary. It's good for a 26-yard run, but let's check the marker. That was right. It was it was thrown right where Billy Pittman was blocking on the edge, and I believe that's who they're going to get for the holding. Holding for four on the offense. Ten-yard belly from the spot of the foul. Replay the third down. Check that. They get Lima Swede on the outside. Yeah, 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 I'd say that's holding. Either that or you said, hey, you, you got my number on the dance card. Now we're yeah. going together here. So we're going to get Brandon King there. You just have to be smarter than that. Eventually you have to let go. I mean, there, there is holding on every play because if you get your hands inside, you're always going to grab some cloth. But as soon as the running back gets close, and you can feel the defender's body language tell you that. You just have to let go. So Jamal Charles comes back in the ball game at tailback, replacing Selvin Young. It is third down, and Texas needs the 23-yard line. Here comes pressure. McCoy steps up, has a man over the middle, throws it complete at the 20-yard line, and there is Billy Pittman for the first down for Texas. That's good for 12 yards. And let's check in down on the sideline with uh, Dr. Jerry Pudge. Jerry? Well, Ron, I know the scoreboard last week showed 24-7 with Ohio State getting the win, but the, are the Longhorns really the loser there? The last two times that the number one and number two have faced off, off in the regular season, the loser of that game has come back to win the national championship. The Gators did it in 96. Florida State was losing to Notre Dame did it earlier back in 1993. So maybe the Longhorns can pull it off before the year's out. Okay, Jeff. Blitz comes right up the middle. They give it off to Charles. Gets it to the outside. He'll score. 10-5. Touchdown. 
You talked about world-class speed. He is on the track team, and when you run very close to a 10 flat in the 100 meters, you look like you're not chugging that hard, but you're passing a lot of people, and particularly when you got a block by somebody like Justin Bladock, the senior out of Plano East. Once again, it's the patience of Charles, though. Watch as he buries this ball inside and just waits for Blaylock to get around. And he also had uh, Yulatowski, who's in at right tackle. So Blaylock goes into guard. Yulatowski comes out to tackle. Just a little old Washington Redskin counterplay, and he waits for them to clear. Very good patience by Charles. Show with the 726 mark. Texas trying to go on top, 14 to nothing. And they do. Greg Johnson with the extra point. So let's take a timeout. So far as we're midway of this opening quarter, it has been all Longhorns. We'll come back and see if the new head coach, Todd Graham, can light a fire under his offense. So, so some of the crowd here at Reliance Stadium tonight in Houston, Texas, for this matchup between Rice and the Texas Longhorns and former Longhorn quarterback Major Applewhite, the offensive coordinator and quarterback coach for the Rice Owls. And it's been a difficult week for him, not trying to avoid people, but simply to say, I mean, hey, I played in Texas, but my blood is blue now. I am a Rice Owl coach. This is Falco from the goal line, and he's going to be stopped at around the 17-yard line. Let the call. Let's check now. I'm one of those that's going to say I'm not surprised. I think they were overrated at the beginning of the year. Tim then still do. Straight ahead with the quarterback and the quarterback option play, and it's going to be Loki, Derek Loki, who will come up and make the tackle. Ed, how about these impact plays? Well, we haven't had much chance to talk about the, Rau, the Rice Owls offense, and we should because Jared Dillard, as fine a receiver as you're going to find in the South, has great ball skills that coaching staff was very surprised to find him after Ken Hatfield left for... Uh, with his wishbone and also in the backfield Smith was a second team all conference guy and has plenty of speed especially on the inside runs. Quentin had a long run against UCLA last week which set up a score pass back into the boundary and that one is well overthrown and there is a marker down back behind the line of scrimmage. Randy Smith, our referee. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 96 on the defense. The 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, let's take another look right here. Well, it was well after the ball was gone. It's not much of a hit by Loki, but you have to throw that. The ball's gone. And uh, it's the officials' job. The number one job of the officials, Ron, is to protect the players. And that was unnecessary by Loki. So the penalty stepped off, brings it out to the 35, and this is uh, the best field position that the Owls have had here in this opening quarter. Armstrong again, high pass from center. Tries to get outside in the right, and he's going to be knocked down for a loss. And this time it's the veteran Tim Crowder, a senior out of Tyler, John Tyler High School. And let's check it on the sideline again with Dr. Jerry Punch. Jerry? Well, Ron, if you want to understand why Major Applewhite took the job here at Rice, it's as easy as one, two, three. Number one, he was a quarterback coach at Syracuse. He comes here for a promotion, becomes the offensive coordinator. Number two, the state of Texas high school recruiting. He is a household name. He can get in any high school and talk to any recruit he wants to. And number three, he woke up at Syracuse one morning, guys, and it was three degrees outside. <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> Pitch back. And I tell you, there are white jerseys in every direction. Quentin Smith, the senior out of Cedar Park, there's just not much he could do. He had long horns all around him. McElroy, one of the first men to get there, and it's a loss of five yards. You know who was in a really bad mood this week, Ron? Gene Chizik. Gene Chizik was beside himself. The defensive coordinator who came in last year for Mac Brown out of Auburn had not lost a football game for 29 straight games, had to go all the way back to 2003, and he was really upset when they when his defense didn't stand up, especially at the end of the first half, and let that big touchdown go. Third down, they need to take it to the 45. Zips this one, has it complete out at the 39-yard line. Nice pitch and catch right there is Evan Ventress. He is a redshirt, or freshman, actually right out of high school. He played at South Lake Carroll, who really has put out a lot of kids into Division One. 
gain of 14 yards, the biggest help right here, it's going to give them better field position as far as this punt. And this is a nice throw. I, listen, Joel Armstrong was an option quarterback last year. He was a receiver until Chase Clement hurt his thumb against Houston. That was a nice throw on the move. They're going to need to get him out of the pocket more, Ron, if they want to get down the field. Here's the punt. Last one only 35 yards. This one is short. Taken on the run at the 30 is Ross. And Ross is going to take it for a return of 10 to around the 40-yard line. So separation Saturday continues on ESPN. We've got a bunch of linebackers down, so maybe Florida State will finally be able to get their running game going. Apparently, they're going to simplify things and not check as much at the line of scrimmage. What's well, tough when you lose a couple of number one, a couple of starters as early in the season as they did. Shelvin Young back in a tailback. They give it to him, and now here comes a reverse, and this is Jordan Shipley. And Shipley is off and running at the 40, at the 30, cuts it back inside, finally tackled at the 20-yard line. Shipley, for two years, has been battling knee surgery problems because of injuries. Played for his father, and uh, that run right there, very impressive. Went out to practice on Thursday, Ron, and I'm not going to lie to you. I kept having to look at my card and say, who is this number eight guy? Because you just don't he expect really him. Well. No, you don't <laughs> expect because you know about Swede. Uh, you know about Quan Cosby. What a great block by Nate Jones there to spring his wide receiver mate. But he, he finally looks healthy, and uh, ha he has great speed on the edge. Texas 141 yards rushing on 12 rushing plays. Right up the middle, Young. Seven will take it down inside the 15 to around the 14. Got to be tackled by Dietrich Davis. That's three tackles for him. Let's check quickly back to play. I'll tell you, that, now that's hard luck right there. That young man is such a fine, fine quarterback. When you wonder about Louisville's chances, <laughs> hate to rain on the parade with uh, such a big victory up there. Young bounces it outside. Nice job defensively by Rice, and that one's going to be halted after a gain of only one. Showing great quickness to the outside is Andre Downs, a senior out of Garland, played at the Rollin High School. Watch what, this move right here. Boy, that's excellent speed by Downs. And good open field. He didn't overrun it, Ron. You know, a lot of times younger players will forget to break down, but Downs, a senior, did a really nice job getting out there. And then range came over and helped him out. Young with 56 yards and a touchdown. Jamal Charles, 43 yards and a touchdown. Charles back in the ball game at tailback. Third down, Texas needs to take it to the 10. And it looks as though with the flag it comes. 16 on the offense, five yard penalty, still third down. It's going to be Jermichael Finley who moved. So five yards will be stepped off, and it'll be third down and a little bit longer. So that freshman will give you a big play down the field, and then they'll jump off sides for you. Live and die by those freshmen sometimes. <laughs> Well, Paul Randolph right now, I, I know is thinking one thing. We're down 14 to nothing, but it would be a big mental battle if we could go ahead and stop them right here, get force them to, to kick a field goal or to attempt one. And then we build off that situation because the first two have been pretty easy. And Texas is trying pretty hard right now to uh, shoot themselves in the foot. And they've got to stay focused. Listen, Rice is so much better. Three players on the line, five-yard <laughs> penalty, still third down. So say that real fast. Ball start, ball start, ball start. <laughs> oh, you know what that is? They didn't get the snap count right. Now, the, the question is, was it center line, the center who didn't get it right, or was it the right guard, left guard, left tackle who did I, I always am going to side with the center on that one. Well, I thought it was the wave, see? <laughs> and they, they were pretty good sync, weren't they? There's enough people in here to get the Third down, and now it's going to be about 13 yards for the first. Here comes a blitz off the corner. Shovel pass right in the middle, 20, 15, 10. Jamal Charles pumping for the end zone. Does he get in? They say no. He is down at the one-foot line. Brian Brains is the man who would dare to make the tackle. Got a flag way back at the 30-yard line, Ron. It looks like Texas may have hurt themselves. Again, great call by Greg Davis, though. Great call. Holding for 16 on the offense. 
the 10 yard penalty to spot the foul. Boy. Replay third down. Jermichael is not, Finley is not doing anything to endear himself to the offensive coaches right now. No, no matter how much ability you have, if you continually hurt your team, you're going to get pulled out. Take a look at him right there as he goes to block out. Yeah, that's just a takedown. Looks like he's working on Jonathan Carey, defensive end on that side. And once he gets up the field, it's a shovel pass. You know that as you start to get older, you start to get out. Yeah, he's by it. There's no reason to do that. You know, you have to, as you start to get more experience, you know where the running back's going to set up in that situation, and you know when the defender's by it. So now, this is four penalties on this drive, six total against the Longhorns. And the length to go, well, I can tell you, this part of Houston, this amount of real estate would bring you several million dollars. Sheldon Young back in the ball game, takes the handoff straight ahead, and will take it to the 29. Range is the man who was there to make the hit on him. You know who made that play call? Mac Brown, the head coach. I guarantee you, he told Greg Davis, keep it on the ground. The only thing that's going to hurt us right now is a turnover. So let's just be safe and see if we can't get a kick. Up 14 nothing, good conservative call. Because I promise you, Greg wanted to unleash one down the field. Good look right there at uh, Colt McCoy. So Coach Randolph is going to get his wish, it would appear. They're going to have to go for a field goal. 46-yard attempt. Plenty of distance. Does he have the accuracy? Yes, he does. 46 yards on the kick. And that equals his longest. And Rice, had, they have to work on that. As you take a look at Paul Randolph and Todd Graham, this is Randolph right to the left of your screen, and Todd Graham. The, the one thing when you meet with these guys, Ron, as we did for several hours yesterday, they cannot be anything but positive and energetic around this team. They can never let their guard down. And so this this has to be seen as something, all right, we got them going backwards. Let's build on that, and hopefully the offense will go out and get something done. Todd Graham, of course, is in this position because he's a defensive coach. That's where his background is. And uh, just cannot stop being positive around his team. Well, he has brought a very positive attitude to the Rice campus, to the student body, also to the alums. Uh, the uh, Rice Stadium has had uh, a lot of work done on it, a lot of renovation. Actually, six and a half million dollars that the head coach went out and helped raised him by raise himself. by himself. You look at time of possession, and uh, pretty lopsided right here. But let's see if the Owls on this offensive possession here can come back and get something going. Going to be returned from two yards deep. This is Downs. Downs gets rolled. It's a tough block at, at around the 12-yard line. And it's going to be stopped at around the 17. And let's check in again with Linda Cohn. Linda. All right, Ron, let's go to Oregon. Oh, well. So here comes Rice offensively on the field. And again, number 13, Joel Armstrong, a junior out of Longview, operates at quarterback. So that is the end of the opening quarter. And as Rice takes the walk down to the other end of the field at the 17-yard line, we'll take a break. It is the Longhorns, 17, and Rice nothing. When we come back, the Owls get something going on this drive. Our state have seen that video a lot since last uh, January the 4th, and some of them have enjoyed it a lot. There are others there are many Division I schools in this state that have not looked on us with, uh, with as much glee. Is this pass thrown complete? Nice pitch and catch. Jared Dillard, a sophomore out of San Antonio, Sam Houston, has uh, great ball skills. And uh, yesterday, uh, his offensive coordinator, Major Applewhite, talked at length about this young man and all the things that he brings to the table. And they were, quite frankly, shocked when they got here that a guy with this good of hands was... On their roster, of course, Ken Hatfield ran a veer option. And Major said, we got here, and Dillard ran good routes, has good hands. They expected he might be at a school like UTEP or a place like that that throws the ball there. Pass going to be well overthrown again, and we're going to go back to Jared Dillard. And let's check it on the sideline. Uh, here's uh, Jerry Punch. 
Ron, not to make any excuses, but last week, Texas, uh, they had some, uh, some, some healing horns, some injuries that were not able to be 100%. We mentioned that defensive end Brian Robeson had pneumonia all week long. Uh, defensive tackle Roy Miller had the flu, did not practice much prior to Florida. I mean, prior to uh, Ohio State. Drew Kelson still out with an ankle. Marcus Griffin injured an ankle in the first quarter. And Terrell Brown suspended, did not play. So they had five key players who missed the game against Ohio State last week. This time a blitz right up the middle in that pass. He was lucky just to get it away. Babino came right up the middle, a sophomore out of Waco. 5'11", 225. And uh, Armstrong looked up and saw nothing but white coming his direction. Right in the middle. And this is a guy that Major Applewhite coached. He sure did. Major was a graduate assistant. He was the card coach, meaning he would stand down on the offensive end and show the defensive scout team the cards and he really liked Bobino back then so Bobino making it tough on his old coach third punt of the night by Rice this far and away the best one by Scruggs and Ross backs up fair catch is made at the 36 yard line well with the departure of Bench Young Texas now is led by the youthful redshirt freshman quarterback Colt McCoy we'll learn more about this young man when we return after this timeout or you're looking at the young man who started at quarterback for Texas in this ball game, Colt McCoy, and he is going to go to the bench for at least one series. We understand Jevin Sneed, a freshman right out of high school, played his high school ball at Stephenville, Texas, will come in very strong arm. You see his numbers at Stephenville High School. Only two losses. Hands the ball off to Charles, turns the corner, and Charles is going to have a gain of about five or six yards. And Sneed was a young man. So many guys doing this now, coming out of high school early. Of course, John David Booty went to USC a year early, which I'm not sure I could figure that one out. But Snead came in for spring ball, and Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator, really co coming out of spring, he thought it was an absolute neck-and-neck -neck race to see who would start, Snead or McCoy, at quarterback. But McCoy separated himself, and he said it came down to feet. Snead is as good as they've had from the waist up, but he's got to work on his mechanics with his footwork. This time he goes from a shotgun formation, hands it off to Charles, big opening right up the middle, has five, has ten, he's off to the races. Cuts back up the near sideline at the 25, at the 20, at the 15, and now is pushed out of bounds. They're going to say at the 13-yard line, it's a run of 46. I think I could come out of retirement and play quarterback if this is all you have to do is hand it off to a world-class sprinter with holes that big. The one thing that Todd Graham and his staff at Rice were concerned about is between the tackle running. They knew the size of this offensive line would be able to open some holes against that three-man line. And Charles is well, really impressive, Ron. The guy with that much speed, how patient he is. A lot of times guys who have that extra gear won't wait. Part of the patience also, though, is he's moving so fast. He doesn't look like but he's still passing people. Selvin Young comes into the ball game at tailback, and he'll get the handoff. Back up into the short side of the field at the five and into the end zone. Touchdown, Texas. Second seven-pointer or six-pointer of the night as the flag is down for Selvin Young. And it could be a hold. Tony Hills looked as though he might have a handful of somebody's jersey from Rice. Holding 87 on the offense. I beg your pardon, Tony Hills. Neil Tweedy, the tight end. Well, they probably got Tweedy in there because Jermichael Finley, the freshman, got two penalties. And so... Now the senior comes in. There he is right up here, working one-on-one. -on -one. Just kept his hands. Again, you have to feel where the defender is and or where the running back is and eventually let go. So the penalty moves it back to the 20-yard line. That would have been Sheldon Young's second touchdown of the night, and Jamal Charles will check back into the ball game at Taylor. to Charles. Same play. Near sideline back into the short side of the field. Got to be stopped for maybe a gain of only one. Brian Reigns is there to make the tackle. Sophomore out of Willow Ridge High School. Well, separations Los Angeles and uh, I think Nebraska made a couple of mistakes this week. They were <laughs> they were yapping off pretty good before they got to the Coliseum. That's still a pretty good bunch the Trojans put out good. on the field. Pass right up in the middle. Got a man open. That is Jermichael Finley, the tight end. And he will be stopped at around the three-yard line. In fact, they're going to spot it down just outside the two. That's good for 18 yards on the play. 
And this is such quality time for a guy like Jevin Steve. It's early enough in the ball game that it's still important. It's not garbage time. Just a wonderful throw. Now, what you want to see a young tight end do, Ron, is you want to see him catch this with his hand so his feet can keep moving. You see a lot of young receiver types that don't have confidence yet in their hands, and they'll slide instead of run through the ball. So it's third down, and they need about a yard. They gave him a spot at the three-and-a-half-yard line. And they go with the running play, and that's Young. And I believe he's going to have the first down just inside the two. William Wood, number 97, on the stop. A senior out of Garrison, Texas, for the Rice Owls. He is a, a backup at nose tackle, but gives them good depth. Nice quality player. One of the things that Todd Graham is going to have to do is get this team going a little earlier. They're having the exact same problem in this game that they had in the first two ball games where they just don't seem to get it going offensively until the second quarter. Now against a team like Texas, a team like UCLA, teams like Houston that can put a lot of points on the board, that spells loss. Hurdling into the end zone. Ball came loose. Was it pick, picked up by Rice? And they did not signal touchdown. That is Rice football as Rucker. Marcus Rucker, a senior out of Magnolia, Arkansas. He was a tailback at Rice, but they wanted more speed at those linebacking positions. And he did just what his coach told him to do. If you see a hole, just like as a running back, you run into it. And Selvin Young. Looked like he never had the ball. A good hit there as he came through the line. By Corey, Corey Shepard. Shepard. Yeah. He never put it away. It looked to me, Ron, like he had his, the wrong elbow up. So it is first down for the Rice Owls as they thwart that Texas drive. So the last two, they forced it into a field goal. And now they make them go away with no points. It is first down at the Owls' seven-yard line. Straight ahead with Quentin Smith. It looked to me on that one that Selvin Young had his left arm down instead of up when he went to take the handoff for the sneak and was never able to lock it. And when he went airborne, Shepard was able to knock it out because he couldn't lock it away soon enough. Second down, Rice. Second down at about seven. Joel Armstrong breaks by one tackle, will not get by the second attempt, and that is Frank Ocam, the junior out of DeSoto, Texas. Very, very strong player at 6'5", 320 pounds. Now you see the numbers with Rice, actually, uh, just uh, just under 3,000 people are undergraduate, but that 4,900 total is graduate school as well. Texas is just over 50,000 students. Armstrong going to have to step up. He didn't get it done, and that's a safety. Boy, you got to know where you are on the field. I know that was a big push coming, but he did not use his feet at all, and Ocam with back-to-back -back tackles, and he gets the safety. And Crowder is there, and the reason that this became a safety was because they stayed in their lanes. Did they call this a touchdown? They did. He fumbled the football, obviously. Wow, took nice it away job by Crowder. Crowder just took what the ball excellent away. Excellent play by Crowder. Just went in there and took it right away. Heads up play by a senior. So at the 10.02 mark, Texas trying to make this a huge lead in the early going of this ball game. Johnson with the extra point attempt. The ball is down and it is up. So Crowder takes the ball away in the Rice end zone, and it's a touchdown, 24 to nothing. Longhorns on top. We'll be right back. At Western Boots. Dave Wheeler has over 100 years of experience in boot making. Only in Texas can you get these extraordinary pieces of artistry from a variety of leathers, both common and exotic, by the master bootmaker, Dave Wheeler. As Bebo looks on and says, Not my hide. He's not even watching the game. <laughs> yeah. He wouldn't have watched man. that little 
that, <laughs> that bump right there either. Here comes the kick. So Crowder, the defensive end out of tighter, gets the touchdown on the takeaway. This is Falco. Breaks it off the left side. Out to around the 25 as a flag goes down at the 18. And it's the kicker, Greg Johnson, who was out there to make the tackle. So it's going to be offensive holding marked off against the Rice Owls. Let's check back at the studio. 40 to 21, Michigan over Notre Dame. And I have a feeling with 40 points being scored by the Wolverines, the lack of speed of the Irish on defense finally caught up with them. Lack of speed for Rice. And, you know, this is something they're going to struggle with against opponents like Texas. They've totally changed the offense from when Cat Hatfield was here. Totally changed the defense. We've got to go recruit guys to fit their system, and they'll get it there. Armstrong hands the ball off inside. Scott Derry, a reserve linebacker out of Pearland, Texas. Not too far down the road here from uh, Houston. Server. Quentin Smith, the ball carrier, and just not much for him to be able to pick up. And, you know, you're deep down into your own territory. You don't want to do anything dumb here. So you've got to kind of stay in that base offense and maybe let Shepard run the ball a couple of times. So loss of about three on the play. Second down, they need to take it out to the 19-yard line and move it on the right side of an offensive front. Looks like Luke Barber. On the offense. Be half the distance. Still second down. Well, you don't want to go too far backwards again. Penetration, these white shirts are getting. Todd Graham, the new head football coach here at uh, Rice University, came down from Tulsa, was the defensive coordinator there, had been at uh, West Virginia with Rich Rodriguez. And now here is our AFLAC trivia question of the week. Before Colt McCoy, who was the last Texas freshman quarterback to win a season opener? I don't even have a hint. When you see it, it was so long this, ago. Yeah. this was easy. <laughs> this time they rolled the pocket. Pass overthrown up around the 17-yard line looking for Torin Dixon. And uh, let's go back down to the sideline. Jerry Punch, what do you got for us? Well, I'm going to show you what Chase Clement, the uh, injured Rice quarterback, was dealing with here. The quarterback who could not play tonight, he has an injury involving his right thumb. Now, he's a right-handed passer, and on the inside of his thumb, right where this uh, it comes together here, there is a small separation here where the ligament, the tendon, attaches here at the base of the thumb. It is not torn completely, just separated. They're going to have him in a splint. He probably won't play against Florida State next week. Probably be back against Army in a couple of weeks, but he got injured late in the Houston game, the opener. Guys? Okay, Doc, thanks for explaining. Now. I know he spent a lot of time day before yesterday when I was at practice running sprints on the sideline. You know the most inter interesting part about that uh, report from Doc? UCLA last week, Texas this week, they go to Florida State next week. They need to change their schedule up a little bit. I, I think that'll happen with the new athletic director in here at Rice. 24 to nothing, Longhorns. We'll come right back. So we are back, and the thing that Joel Armstrong has to be most careful of is just what happened on the last series, and that is he got caught in the end zone, and defensive end Tim Crowder stole the ball from him. For a touchdown for Texas. It's third down. They need the 19. Here comes pressure from the backside. Delivers this pass way overthrown, but he got it away beyond the line of scrimmage. Arakpo, Brian Arakpo, a sophomore who played his high school football here in Houston at Lamar High School, was the man putting on the pressure. Well, Rice did everything they could last week to upset UCLA out of the Rose Bowl. And I think what they're learning right now is this Texas team has a lot more speed on defense than that UCLA bunch they played last Saturday. Because anytime things break down, and Armstrong, one of the fastest guys on the, on the field, is having a hard time getting away from the big guys up front for Texas. Stretch with the punt. Driving spiral. Comes down at the 46-yard line. Ross, 40. 35, still spinning, got away from the tackler, runs into his own man at the 25, and he's going to score. 10-5, touchdown, Texas. <laughs> 42 yards on the punt, 46 yards on the return. And unfortunately for Rice, one of their players goes down and was grabbing his leg in a lot of pain at about the 32-yard line. Hey, 
Aaron Ross, 46-yard punt return for the touchdown to put Texas up 30 to nothing with the extra point attempt to come. Let's take another look at the return, and, and we can uh, see where the Rice player goes down. We don't have his number as yet. Surrounded by medical personnel. And it's missed tackles. This is the one thing that uh, Todd Graham and his staff have worked so hard. Last week against UCLA, two missed tackles in the running game cost them about 90 rushing yards. Of course, Chris Marquis ran for over 200 yards, but about 80 of that was in missed tackles. So we're going to take a timeout. We'll check more on the injury after we return. 30 to nothing, Texas. 8-10 remaining. Why is the University of Texas at Austin so special? Is it the academics? The rich cultural diversity? Is it the open minds and curious thinkers that inspire self-discovery? Yes. We're Texas. What starts here changes the world. So we are back to a live shot. You can see uh, medical personnel, trainers from both teams helping here. Uh, John, Jonathan Arsenault is the young man who was injured, a freshman out of Tyler, Texas. And he is being taken immediately to the locker room. You can see the air cast on his leg. And in fact, the minute he went down, he was closest to the Texas bench, and their medical personnel got there first just because of proximity, but they could tell the extent of the injury. That air cast went on very, very fast, and now he is being taken to the locker room. But uh, I'm afraid that report is not going to be good. So it's Texas to attempt the extra point, trying to make it 31 to nothing at the 8-10 mark. Greg Johnson again to attempt the extra point. It's a good pass, knocks this one home. And the new score, the Longhorns 31 and Rice nothing. Greg Johnson had to win his job this week in camp. He had that missed kick against Ohio State. Coach Brown opened up the competition with Hunter Lawrence. Here's game track. Young, 64 yards, has a touchdown. Charles, 94 yards, and a touchdown. And Texas was not messing around early, Ron. Everything was the run game. Here's the defensive touchdown right there. The ball taken away by Tim Crowder. Out of Tyler, John Tyler, and he scores the touchdown. Good heads-up play. Typically, a defensive lineman's going to go in there. It was Arakpo who caused the quarterback to try to back out of there. But it was a nice job by Crowder. Well, here's a red zone alert in that uh, Oklahoma-Oregon game. Oregon on the Oklahoma 16-yard line with a first and 10. With 1-12 remaining, and the Sooners on top by seven. you ever done a game in Austin Stadium, Ron, out in Oregon? It is, for a small place, it holds about 50,000. It's one of the loudest stadiums I've ever been in. And this kick return that is very smart on the part of Mike Falco, who goes down on one knee. And uh, Dr. Jerry Punch, you got a report on the injury. Yeah, Ron, obviously you hate to give these kind of reports because what happens is when uh, when a player goes down and they put an air cast on immediately, you know, ordinarily are dealing with a fracture. In this case, that is the case. Tom Clanton, the chief orthopedic surgeon for uh, Rice, was telling me it involves the tibia here. This is the large weight-bearing bone on the lower leg. There are two bones on the leg, the tibia and the fibula on the outside, and it was the tibia that is involved in the fracture site for Jonathan Arsenault. He has had it splinted. They've taken him inside for x-rays, updates, a little later on. Oh, okay, Jerry, thanks so much. Right on top of it, as usual. Rice got to get something to go uh, their way rushing. This uh, rushing play right here is going to go for a positive two yards, but you got to understand on the afternoon, they only had, they are minus 14 rushing. Well, Major Applewhite, the offensive coordinator, just trying to get anything going and get his yeah, best players. Yeah. yeah, he's just got to do something. And Dillard that time was lined up in the slot. They backed him out, and as Armstrong came to him, he becomes the pitch back. Just trying to do anything to get his best players involved in the offense. 
Now you got a flinch there. You can see Crowder come on across as Texas made a shift defensively. 52 on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. And this is something that Major Applewhite, when we met with him yesterday, they're still trying to get some leadership in this offensive line. We showed the veterans that are in there, but these guys spent their entire career as down blockers. They were always blocking at angles in that veer option, and now a little different scheme. I start to say the scheme is totally different because totally. yeah. they're having to block differently. A veer is an apple. This offense is an orange. Well, they're going to recruit a lot more kids out of Texas with oranges than with apples. <laughs> it's the spread offense, uh, you know, Stephenville High School, Jevin Sneed on that side, we already talked about. The 13 on the offense, five yard penalty, still second down. We already talked about Carroll High School out of South Lake, Texas. All, a lot of schools in Texas now running the spread offense, and so that was. One of the biggest reasons that Todd Graham went and got Major Applewhite, not just because he's a very bright young coach who's going to have a great career, but because he can go and talk to any quarterback or receiver and Rice has a chance at it. Well, Todd Dodge is the coach at, the, at Carroll High School and has done an exceptional job. And being a former Texas quarterback, uh, Major knows him well. So, And there are a lot of those kids who are playing at Division I. We saw them last week uh, play for Arizona. Falco was the man with the ball that time. Going to be stopped in his third down. That is the longest gain of this first half. Eight yards of the play. See if they can pick up a first down here. Third and pick it up. Rice is now going to the no huddle run. And I think this is a nice change up by Coach Applewhite. Texas shows blitz, and here it comes, and they throw it complete. There's Dillard, loses the ball, but he was out of bounds when it happened. Tackled by Aaron Ross. That's the second first down, but the first by the offense. The other first down was by penalty, I believe. Isn't that right, E? And now Rice back at the line of scrimmage. I think they're going to try to hurry up. Really nice route. Got Ross turned around, but you don't expect. Dillard's got to lock that thing away. You don't expect Armstrong, who was playing receiver, Two weeks ago, threw that ball right on time and right on the mark. Well, this young man has had a lot to ask of him. Blitz coming off the right side of the top of your screen and hit immediately. And that is a Crowder who was there to make the tackle. Had a touchdown just a moment ago. Let the call. Let's check. All righty. I talked to some people in the great Northwest this offseason, and they said Oregon has not forgotten the Holiday Bowl. And they're a good football team, and they're tough at Austin Stadium. And that running play goes absolutely nowhere. Credit Robert Kellebrew with the guy who got out there first to make the hit. Well, separation Saturday. AP Top 25 matchups. You can see Michigan won a huge over Notre Dame. Nebraska, USC later tonight. Miami got uh, belted by Louisville 31 to 7 that is a good Louisville football team Texas Tech and TCU more of a defensive struggle than most everybody would have thought Auburn won it 7 to 3 old-fashioned SEC football in that one there and Oklahoma holding on for dear life against Oregon Armstrong sets the screen gets it to Quentin Smith and the minute Quentin gets his hands on the football it was Bobino and a number of his friends. Lewis came stepping in there as well. And they're going to make it a fourth down situation for the Owls. And I believe the fifth punt of this first half. You know, Mac Brown told his coaches this week, be prepared for our team to be flat because of the loss to Ohio State. Well, I don't think Gene Chizik <laughs> would have let his defense come out flat. He was not happy about their performance. And... They're playing awfully well today. It's a good coverage kick right here. Very high. Ross couldn't get to it. In fact, ran it to his own blocker and then just stayed away from it as it goes out of bounds at the 40. 32 yards on the punch. And we go back to the sideline <laughs> on the punch, on the kick. <laughs> Let's go to Dr. Punch. Or is it Dr. Kick? I knew what you meant, Ron. I knew where you were <laughs> I'm going. I'm glad you did. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Our Aflac trivia question a little bit ago. Colt McCoy became the first Longhorn freshman quarterback to win in the opening game of the year since who? About 1944. Go all the way back 
to the Hall of Famer Bobby Lane, who beat Southwestern in the opener. And by the way, Lane lost his second game just like Colt did. Colt lost to Ohio State. Then what did Lane do? He went ahead and ran the rest of the year and had an ups. In fact, uh, shut out Oklahoma and A&M to have a great season. Maybe that's a deja vu for Colt McCoy. Guys? Well, we'll wait and see. McCoy running for his life, throws it, got a man wide open on the near side of the field. That is, uh, is it Chipley or Nate Joe? No, it's Quan Crosby, number six. And that's going to be good for 21 yards. He caught him out of the corner of his eye and then just had to sling the ball back across the field. Well, and a lot of times you'll hear people say, well, don't throw it back across the field. But this one, he has such a good idea of where everyone was. And just because he had to go back to the right, the coverage was not on the back side. And, you know, talking about what Doc is saying, if they go on a run here, Ron, this team can very quickly get back in the national title race. If you're going to lose, lose in September. The Big 12 is not as good as it's been in the past. If they can run it, they'll be right back. Selvin Young, sweep to the right, cuts it back up for about six, almost seven yards. Dietrich Davis. Dietrich has had a nice ball game. Uh, he is a sophomore out of Brackettville. He played uh, linebacker in high school. They moved him back there just two weeks ago. As you look at Bobby Lane, the uh, quarterback, 1944 to 1947, went on to have a terrific career with uh, the Lions. You know, and there's been another great quarterback at Texas. There's now two great quarterbacks at Texas who didn't exactly have the beautiful throwing motion that you expect. Bobby Lane didn't exactly look perfect when he threw it, but it was thrown well. And Vince Young was the exact same way. The pass is thrown. That's a strike. And that's Nate Jones, a junior out of Texarkana. Well, I'm beginning to wonder, as you take a look at the freshman quarterbacks at the University of Texas starting in 1998, under Mac Brown, Major Applewhite, and then Sims, Bench Young, and McCoy. Well, this is twice that they, uh, no one knew what the snap count was. Ball start, 55 on the offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. I want to call your attention to one thing. You just saw the shot of Mac Brown on the sideline. Look how far back he is standing if we pull back the shot, rather than at the line of scrimmage or as far down as he can go. Because of the knee replacement that he had during the offseason, he got hit in last week's ball game. Total accident. Yeah, and, and it was a thing where he, that he was caught by two players. But the doctor said that he might have had to go back to the hospital and had surgery again if he had been hit on that thing. And it's very difficult. Mac Brown's background is as an offensive coordinator. Spent a lot of time up in the booth, and then when he went to Tulane and then on to North Carolina, had to go down on the field and called plays from the sideline for years and used to like to be ahead of the offense because yeah. he wanted to see what the defense did. And he said, quite frankly, I'm a little lost behind the offense. I just see a big jumble of players, and so... He has to rely more. Of course, Greg Davis now calls the plays for him. He has to rely more on Greg's eyes from upstairs to tell him what the coverages are and things like that because he just can't see it on that side yet. Second down at 15. Selvin Young comes back in a tailback. Rice with a blitz off the corner. And he ran right by Selvin Young, and Selvin slipped down. Let the cone looks about I wasn't trying to throw you a curve there. You know it. <laughs> she caught it. <laughs> Grabbed it right out of the dirt. Yeah, she did. Uh, so coming up at halftime, I'll have information on all of those ball games. Well, who do you think is today's MVP? You can vote for your favorite from your cell phone. Uh, we'll let you know when the polls open, and that is during today's fourth quarter. Each vote costs 99 cents. Standard messaging rates may apply. Going back to Ohio State, you know, last week when Ohio State came in, I don't think the Texas coaches knew how much confidence Jim Tressel and his staff have in Troy Smith. They expected to see... A little more throwing, but not as much as they did. Of course, Texas had their best pass rusher at pneumonia, Robinson. Their best cover corner, Terrell. Brown was out with the suspension, and so Ohio State goes, empties the backfield a lot, and lets Troy Smith throw it down the field, and I think caught him off guard a little bit. Well, so far rushing in this ball game, Jamal Charles, 94 yards and a touchdown. Selvin Young, 68 yards and a touchdown. It is third down. McCoy steps up into the pocket, gets by a tackler, looking for somebody to help him, and then just throws it away. Oh, that was a, not a smart play on the sideline there by Courtney Gordon. He's going to get a personal foul. McCoy had given himself up on the sidelines, 
and threw that thing away, and Gordon went and hit him with his hands as he was going out of bounds, and he's going to get called for the personal foul. Personal foul, dropping the passer for 98, the defense, and it'll be 15 yards, automatic first down. A bit of a flop there by McCoy, but he did put the hand on him. He was out of bounds, and he put the hand on him. You saw the head coach getting out of dodge there. <laughs> yeah, he's got to be very aware, and he, his leg's not healthy yet. He said it's going to be about a year before it's completely healthy because he's not been able to do the things that a knee replacement patient normally has to do. Of course, he had to go to camp, get his team ready to play. Well, the doctor has uh, asked him to every Tuesday after he stood up all day on a Saturday is to stay in the golf cart. Do not walk around to practice on Tuesday and so he doesn't get inflammation. It, it's really difficult for him because he's always been a coach involved in, in every facet, of, especially the offensive team. Good pass right over the middle, caught at the five-yard line. Touchdown, Lima Swede. Good for 16 yards on the quick-looking pass. And this is a young quarterback who's starting to get comfortable in not only what they're doing, but what personnel are out there. Ja'Cory Shepard doing everything he can, but you're, you're almost always going to have a mismatch when your receiver is 6'5", 220-pound Lima Swede and just throws an absolute strike on the slant. And with a body the size of Swede, all you've got to do is lead him just a little bit. And there's no way the defender's going to go. Do Johnson with the extra point attempt. Knocks it through. And with a minute and 13 seconds showing on the clock. Well, Texas Longhorns proving that they are at least the number eight team in the nation at 38 to nothing. And we are back. Falco returning uh, the kick. And it's going to be Rice football at around the 19-yard line. You know, we've been talking a lot about Major Applewhite, the offensive coordinator, that Todd Graham, one of the first hires, uh, Major, his mentor is still Greg Davis, the quarterback's coach and offensive coordinator at Texas, and spent a lot of time on the phone with Greg and said, should I take this job? He went with Greg Robinson to Syracuse after his two years as a GA at Texas, and Todd Graham was really hammering him to come, but Major wasn't sure. He didn't feel like he may not be ready to be an offensive coordinator, and Todd Graham said, listen, I was a defense coordinator at 26. You can do it at 27. Quick pass by Armstrong. That ball is tipped. And is it intercepted? No, it falls free to the ground. Down on the sideline on the Rice bench, Todd Graham has been down on one knee talking with the defense. And, and it's a situation, he's still down there. And it's, it's a thing where it doesn't matter that the score is 38 to nothing. I say it doesn't matter, it does matter. What he's trying to do is he's got to keep on coaching down by this amount and <laughs> explain to these kids, okay, this is adversity, yeah, but this is the level that we've got to get to to get to where we want to be. And let's uh, go back to the sideline to check with Jerry Punch. You got an update on uh, Arsenal. Yeah, Ron, uh, Tom Flanton, the orthopedic surgeon for Rice, looking back in the uh, in the uh, locker room, and they have x-ray and C-arm facilities here. And what I'm being told, they think there may be a dislocation of the left knee, uh, just right above the tibia where they thought it might be broken earlier when they were examining it. They have talked to his family. They're on their way to the hospital for further x-rays, but a dislocation possibly at the left knee. Okay, Jerry, thanks so much. And there will be no more play in this first half. That is the end of the first 30 minutes with our score. Texas 38 and Rice nothing. Now the Linda Cone for the College Football Halftime Report. Linda.